Welcome to the Sam and Joe VA Show, where we teach women just like you how to start and scale a thriving virtual assistant business. We're your hosts, Sam and Joe, and get ready to have the control, flexibility, and freedom you've always dreamed of. Welcome to episode 205, the ADHD Friendly VA, an interview with Mandy. Today on the podcast, we have the pleasure of having New Zealand's ADHD-friendly virtual assistant, Mandy Purdy, join us. Mandy launched Transcend Admin around three years ago and has absolutely gone from strength to strength. However, the real turning point, we believe, in Mandy's success was when she decided to go all in on her very unique specialty. Mandy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Lovely to be here. Okay, let's kick into the very beginning of the story, Mandy. When did this all start for you, this virtual assistant journey of yours? So, yes, it was about three years ago that I was working full time, trying to juggle everything as we do, being a mother, being a full time worker. Mm-hmm. And I was working alongside another one of our virtual assistants friends and she said to me look Mandy you would make an awesome virtual assistant to be honest I hadn't I didn't even know what it was back then (laughs) and um, so she sort of worked at me for quite some time until it got to the point that I was like actually yeah that sounds really cool so I am not one to do things in halves once I make a decision I go all in and I just do it Sometimes it works out for the good, sometimes not so much. And I decided to do it in stepping stone. So I took a role that was closer to home and it was 30 hours a week. So although it was still quite a chunk of time, I took into consideration the fact that I was no longer going to have to be traveling for about an hour a day and all those other things that that were taken up my time that I could actually then start doing billable work. And that's how I started and I found a couple of clients and it soon got to the point that the client work was getting too much to sustain that and working. And so I think it, I think it was about two or three months I was working part-time and I handed in my notice and Mm. started working full-time as a virtual assistant. So yeah, it was pretty quick, but, and I'm very, very lucky that it worked out as well as it did. That was quick. That was quick. When you were in that kind of transition in between, you know, you're you're working, but you're also, well, the VA stuff's still working, but you're working uh, (laughs) nine to five as well as doing, you know, a couple of, supporting a couple of clients. What were the struggles like doing that? Because I, I feel like that's not an unusual story. There's a lot of virtual assistants and it's a sensible thing to do, right, financially, is to have that kind of that stepping stone, that slower transition. But were there struggles that came with trying to do both? Yeah, 100%. And I I guess it comes down to the fact that you're trying to do that client work in the evenings around your family time. So you're working till 11, 11.30 at night and and also things, Mm -hmm. and it depends on the clients that you have, but there were times that actually there were some things that needed attention during the day when I was at my normal job. So I'd find at lunch times I was too quickly checking emails to see if there was anything urgent that needed doing, and it it was it was tough to juggle. But you're so right that it, for me it was the right thing to do because I couldn't, even though I say I lock, you know, I can take it, things and do it quickly. Realistically, you need to be mindful of your finances, and you know we still need to bring in a salary. I can't couldn't just walk away from a full time salary to nothing. So that's the way I chose to do it. And I was willing to make those sacrifices, but it did definitely come to a stage that I had to make that call and I had to say, okay, I've got this many hours of client work. I see the potential of this many more. It might not be as much as what I'm getting hour-wise for my 30 hours a week. However, it's bringing me up to to then go looking for more work. And yeah, it didn't take long at all. A matter of weeks and I was literally full-time. That's incredible. I know. It, did you put it, had you put or given yourself a time frame like, like, okay, I'm going to resign and I've got 
I've got this much buffer, so I've got to ha- I've got to make this work within a month. Or you were just like, no, I'm ready. I'm confident that's going to happen, and you didn't even have to think about that buffer or think about it not working. Yeah, I think the second one and could give you an insight into my brain is I don't often think I'm quite impulsive, so I don't often think <laughs> um, about the implications too closely, which again may not be the best thing, but it has worked for me so far. But yeah, I think I was, I wouldn't have done it if I wasn't confident that Mm -hmm. I would be able to continue. And also the other thing to think about is like, yes, I was working 30 hours at my part-time job, but the hourly rate was a lot lower than what I was earning as a virtual assistant. So Mm -hmm. actually I only needed to do 15 hours a week or 20 maximum to be able to make up that same as the 30 hours, you know, as an example. So I didn't have as much, as many hours I had to try and find that I would have if I had been going for another part-time role. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's not like you need to, you have 30 hours in your part-time role and you have to have 30 hours of client work to make that same financial amount, right? So, yeah, that's great. And so I know that listeners are waiting, Mandy, for you to tell them how did you find those clients? Because there's a lot of virtual assistants who struggle to find clients. You clearly have never had that struggle. So what is it that you did to get those clients that you had first off when you were still in that role? And then how did you go out and find more clients? I would say that at least 90% of my clients right from would go through to still now is word of mouth, Mm. 100%. My initial client was someone who approached me because they had been recommended me by someone. And then my second big client was, who's actually based in the state, she was recommended by someone that she knew in New Zealand to me. So, yeah, it was literally word of mouth. And then from there, I've, you know, I'm not the best with social media and putting myself out there and things like that. I'm trying to get better. But yeah, other than it's literally mostly been word of mouth. So you must have had a network of friends and people that you told about what Mm. you were looking to do for them to be able to find you, right? So is that one of your superpowers is having those networks and those friendships? Yeah, so I've obviously I've had some really, really good roles previously and with, with a big network of people. And not just within the, the company that I've worked for, but also the extended networks outside of that company that yeah. I've, you know, had relationships with some really big organizations in New Zealand that I've become friendly with. I guess once I decided this is what I was doing, I put it out on my own social networks and this is what I'm doing. And that's when we're, oh, okay. Yeah. And that's where it came from. So I was like, oh, I heard Mandy actually, she's started as a virtual assistant. You should contact her. And that's mm-hmm. kind of where it's gone. And so, you know, New Zealand's a really small place and, uh, yeah, so it's definitely the word about having those networks and having that, I guess, for me, having the the network from previous roles, having some really solid background Mm -hmm. in previous roles was really, really helpful. Yeah, I don't don't think we actually realise when we're in employment, like in a corporate or in our nine to five, just how important that networking and meeting other people and other organizations and building those relationships is so powerful. We completely underestimate that. And I think if anyone is in a role and thinking about becoming a virtual assistant, it starts with building those relationships and having a really great network of people around you. So when you do announce that you are going out into business, there are people like for you, Mandy, that are going to recommend you and say, oh, I know someone who's, you know, can help you. That is so powerful and well done. But did you did you think about that when you were in the role? Was it like a a plan no, that you had? Obviously, I had never, you know, up until the spe- other person in the virtual assistant network had been talking to me about it. I had never yeah. been in my sight. But I guess for me, is one of my core values is mm-hmm. treating people how I'd like to be treated. So I yeah. would always go above and beyond for people with regardless of if it's in my business or someone else's mm. business, I want to do my best job for them. And mm. I'm not going to be a dick and I'm not going to, <laughs> you know, do something that goes against my values. And I think that comes across. People like, they enjoy 
working with people mm. like that and they're going yeah. to recommend people like that. So it doesn't matter what role you're in, whether or not it's your business or someone else's business, just don't be a dick. Just be a really good person <laughs> with good skills and that you will always find yourself, you know, in a better space. Yeah, I, re- I reckon somebody needs to use that as their tagline. Like, yeah. please, if you're a virtual assistant that hasn't brand, like, created your brand yet, please use that as a tagline. I would, I would love that. Speaking of taglines, though, you've just mentioned your tagline, and I didn't realize that was your kind of number one value in your business, which is going above and beyond. That's your tagline? Yeah, yeah. and that's kind of where my business name came from, too. Like, transcend. I want to transcend the normal, mm. what is it ex- expected, like, you know, you can be given your task list and you can stick to that task list and do a good job and fine. But no, actually, I want to go above that. I want to really give someone a really great experience. So that's my tagline going above and beyond because that's yeah. truly what I, I aim to do. I bet you do, yeah. So, Mandy, you, you've mentioned earlier that you don't tend to overthink things and that's not necessarily a good thing all the time. Like you just go straight in once once you've made a decision, that's it. Guns yeah. are blazing. When it came to niching, did that was it like that? Was it like no hesitation? Once you'd picked it, you went all in. This was the right move for you? Or did you overthink it and worry? Yeah, no, I definitely just went all in and I had Sam and Joe in my head going you know it's really powerful to have a niche and to go you know do it that way and saying I went all in I actually niched and then niched again so Mm. initially I decided that I would like to niche to and I suppose it was kind of because of the clients that I was already working with that was like I really enjoy this work I really enjoy the people I'm working with and what we're doing and it was all the clients I was working with was all around health and well-being and, you know, making people's lives better through different initiatives. So initially I thought, okay, well, I want to niche into health and well-being, mental health and well-being. And, and that was great. But then I thought, actually, no, I, I, I want to go another step even further than that. I want to niche even further. And that's when I started, well, I've got a, you know, ADHD is a, is a really important thing to me. I have very mm. close people in my life with ADHD, so it was something that was important to me. And I really felt like, again, going back to my values and my mm. going above and beyond. I want to I want to help people, and I'm not a a doctor or a psychiatrist or a counselor or anything like that. But I can support those types of people who are then supporting others. And so how can I support people in my own way? And my skill base is administration and executive assistance or whatever you want to call it. And so that's my way of helping them. So even though I'm not directly helping the mental health side of things, I am indirectly helping. No, I think you are, Mandy. I think you are really helping those clients that you have on your books with their mental health because Imagine the stress that you are relieving them of and the things that you are helping them, like, you know, stay organized, keep on track, keep focused. That is Huge. so important for business owners' mental health. So, yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. I think, I think you are very directly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, for those that, that maybe haven't been exposed to somebody with ADHD, whether it's friends, family, co workers, how how do you how do you support them? Like, it, what's different supporting somebody with ADHD than a client without? Yeah, so I guess the the tasks and things that you're doing are, are, are the same as what you do with someone who's neurotypical, but mm. it, it's just taking that that up that next level. And for us, it's the fact that we understand. So there are there's a lot of people who have ADHD or some other form of neurodivergence that that feel shame if they feel Mm -hmm. that they're not good at something or they feel shame for the fact that they can't be on time to their appointments or they can't manage their day because they just are so overwhelmed with with what's on their to-do list they just don't Mm -hmm. even know where to start so they just shut down and don't do anything so the fact that we understand and that we're empathetic and that we're not going to judge you we're just going to walk along beside you and help you to to do what you need to do in your day so although the tasks are probably the same, it's probably the way that we approach it and the fact that, yeah, we understand, we get you, we understand you, 
and mm. you know we are here to make your life easier and let's work together on how that looks for you and it may be for one person it may be okay this really works for me and this is how I like things done but that could and, and it's the same with any client really but another person is like no I can't deal with mm. learning this whole new app or I don't want to use a project management tool. All I want to do is have an Excel spreadsheet that we can share things together. Mm-hmm. And that's what works for me. So it's working out what's the best thing that works for them and then keeping them on the track. And also there's a lot of accountability. So it may be that the plan for the week is this and let's help you set those priorities and let's talk about what needs to be done and let's keep you focused on the tasks that need to be done rather than hyper-focusing on Hyper focusing on tasks that may be exciting but might not be your priority, and then holding them accountable throughout the week. Okay, check in. Where are you getting? Where are you at this task? What can be done? Check in again and just holding them accountable mm-hmm. so they've got some a reason for going. So it's just sort of those the ways that we're working with them rather than the task that we're doing. Yeah. Oh, that's so, so. I have someone close to me that has ADHD, and you know, he, he really struggles with making a plan step by step of what he needs to do and Mm. so I can see that there is so much value in you understanding that for Mm. those with ADHD so that you can be their support for that Mm. help them actually make that plan step by step and keeping the focus like Mandy I can my brain is just like firing thinking this is so valuable yeah there are a lot of entrepreneurs who are coming out saying that they have ADHD and I think it's Mm. the you know they're so creative they have lots of ideas and they you know just want to go off and and do all these things but they actually do need someone like you mandy to keep to them, bring on them track. track and, and they'd be like okay i've got this and, and you're right people that actually generally are really creative and they've got so yeah. many ideas and they just want mm-hmm. to get out there and do it and it may be that they say okay well i've got this and focus all their attention on the social media side of it because they want that to be really mm-hmm. amazing but, but they haven't set up their systems or their processes yeah. so it's all very well having all this mm. the advertising side done, but if you haven't got the stuff in behind it done, which is maybe not be is not as exciting, so it's easier it's just to we won't yeah. we won't worry about that. We'll just work on this. So it's just yeah. like helping to then to think about the the tasks that actually still need to be done for their business that may not be as exciting, and they might might procrastinate over it and all that sort mm-hmm. of thing. But it's it still needs to be done, and it. And yes. how can we support them to do get those yeah. tasks done? Wouldn't it be cool if we could do all the fun stuff and none of the boring stuff? <laughs> yeah, in our yeah. <laughs> oh, I'd love that. It, it really feels as though you've created this safe space for business owners with ADHD and 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 whatnot to to really just be themselves, like mm. unapologetically. Mm. This is me. I struggle with this. You get me. I don't have to explain myself. I don't have to apologize yeah. for it. Yeah. And yeah. and you know you're going to keep me on track, and everything's going to get done. Like yeah. that's yeah. incredible. Now yeah. I couldn't tell you the number of discovery calls I've had with people that have ended up in tears. Oh, They're like oh my gosh, you understand me, and you know I'm really struggling here. Don't know. I don't even know where to start. And oh, you get me. And there's tears both sides. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, so oh, amazing. Honestly, it just makes everything worthwhile when you can yeah. actually have someone that you know you're able to help. Yeah, yeah. I was actually that was going to be one of my questions to you, Mandy. Was do you see, you know, someone that that comes to you as a lead in the discovery call who has tried to outsource before and it just hasn't mm-hmm. worked because they just haven't felt understood and it's it's been like a clash and. It's like, oh, both sides have given up and, and walked away. Do you do you meet leads like that? Yeah, I know. Well, sure, I can't say I've, it's happened a lot. I find that a lot of the leads that I'm meeting with at the moment haven't worked with a virtual assistant before because they haven't really, I suppose it's when they've heard about me and what, they've probably thought, I, I can't work with someone. I, you know, it's hard to outsource this sort of thing or they've tried to do it yeah. themselves and then they're struggling. So... I might have had one or two that have worked with virtual assistant before. It hasn't worked out, but and also we've had clients that we it hasn't worked out with us as well. And that's mm-hmm. just the nature of the business. It's like, well, actually, even though it may be that the client just still does not know themselves what they need support with, so they're struggling and they're bouncing around all over the place. And as yeah. much as we can try and pull them in, 
we can't do the work or the work for them. We can guide mm-hmm. them and help them and everything, but we can't actually do everything for them. There's still some area that they have to do themselves. So, yeah, it's them having a really clear idea of what support they need to, well, obviously with guidance from us, but some, just a few clients have been like, I just don't know what I, I'm just, so, I don't know. I think they probably mm-hmm. need business coaching more than a virtual assistant mm-hmm. at this stage. Yeah, you're, you're not going to be a silver bullet. Yeah. We met a uh, perfect lead for you, Joe and I, in Auckland. Was it about a month or so ago, Joe? We were yeah. um, in Auckland for an event and we had popped down to the waterfront to, to have a drink and, and do a little bit of, of, of work together. And this lady came and sat down beside us and she was, I, I think she was kind of listening into what we were talking about and she couldn't help but join in the conversation and she was so lovely and she was so outgoing and but she was a little bit in terms of like the thought process it was going from one idea to the other and we'd asked her what she did and she couldn't really tell us what she did it sounded very interesting but it was kind of like we're still to this day we don't actually know what what her job was (laughs) and I don't know how did the conversation come around to ADHD I can't remember but she had said oh I have ADHD Oh, maybe I need a virtual assistant. I have ADHD, so I can't, you know, something about structure or being organized or something like mm. that, keeping focus. And so we were telling her about you, Mandy. <laughs> I'm like, this is the kind of person who has all of these ideas. She was super mm. extroverted. She had mm. this incredible outfit on. She was so fun. But we could just tell that she would really do well with someone helping to organize her and, you know, yeah. keep her on track and get some stuff done. Yeah. So, yeah, we were, we were singing your praises, Mandy. And ah. do, you know, do you know why a niche like that really works? Mm-hmm. Because it is so super clear what you do, Mandy, that immediately we knew the exact person to recommend to her because you have niched into the ADHD-friendly realm kudos to you for going all in on a niche and that is why it works because people remember exactly what you do or who you support there's a little side story for you mandy yeah, singing your praises awesome. everywhere and <laughs> enough, i don't know i haven't come across anyone that has has niche like that in the virtual system industry in new zealand i i haven't come across yeah. any others that are marketing themselves as ADHD friendly or an ADHD virtual assistant there there are a few internationally but it's quite a small pool of people so I bet there's a really big pool of clients who have Mm. ADHD because so many of them are entrepreneurs so and we're also finding that it's not just entrepreneurs and that I'm also had had people contacting me that are just needing some help with their life admin Mm. I've got kids and we've got this and you know, we, we don't pay our bills because, you know, and I'm overwhelmed and how I need a quote for my fence and la, la, la. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we've, we've been getting life admin and stuff coming through as well. So it's not just business owners. Yeah. Yeah, it's others as well. Yeah, oh, nice. Goodness. You're doing such great work. And, and, and it's not just you, Mandy. You've now grown a team, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I've got four other amazing ladies in my team. So... One I would classify as full time, and the other three are more part time. Yeah, they've all got room to grow, so we still we still wooden leaks come in. We've still got capacity, which is really yeah. nice. Yeah, but it is a juggle. It is a juggle managing a team. I'm still doing client work, trying to grow my business. It's yeah, it is tough. There's a lot of hours mm-hmm. that go into it. Yeah, having a team is not a walk in the park. I'm no. pretty sure if you've listened to the podcast <laughs> at any point, we do we never sell growing a team as a walk in the park and it's the silver bullet, right? So how did how did it start? How did you know that you needed to have get some help? How did you trans did you transition clients over? Did you just put new clients onto that person? And how did that process go for you? Yeah, so I I was completely full and I had started thinking about the fact that I would like to grow and grow with the team, but I hadn't quite quite thought too much ahead in terms of that. I had someone 
who is a friend of mine approached me was considering has been a virtual assistant before was considering leaving full-time work and started talking to me about it so I so she ended up coming and working with me and she's grown and she's the one that's now probably close to full-time and that's all new clients so I didn't hand over any clients she's or the the team that I have have all got new clients cool and do they, how do, like, do they come to you having understood an ADHD client person? Do they have someone in their life that they like know that already? Or did you have to train them and teach them about what it's, what yeah, they so would need every, to do? Every team member I have either have lived experience of ADHD or mm -hmm. very close family with ADHD. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, that is really important to me. And I suppose that's why I haven't. I suppose it's a catch-22, really. Like, I've niched down to this, to this, you know, I've niched out ADHD. But, I, but to be able to serve people like that, I want my team members to have a really solid understanding. And mm. if I want them to be, to understand why they've got these struggles and to be in, empathetic and so the client doesn't have to mask how they are in front of them, mm. I need someone to be able to understand and, so I've kind of been very, very selective with who mm. I bring on and I've, and that's probably slowed me down a little bit because I'm probably a little bit nervous about rapidly expanding and not bringing in the right people. So I just want, yeah. for, you know, for someone who's quite impulsive and does things quickly, I've actually expanded slowly because mm. I don't want to get the wrong fit and the wrong person. Mm. Well, especially if you're doing client work as well, like mm -hmm. you have a limited amount of time yeah. that you can manage issues and manage issues with clients or manage issues with yeah. team members. So yeah, I think that's important. And it's a really a strategy that has served you well, Mandy. Did we actually mention that you only started three years ago and now you're a team of five? Like that is incredible, Mandy. Even though you might feel like that's quite slow growth, that's actually incredible growth. And we're super proud of you because I think we met you right at the very start of your journey when you came into the Scale It Mastermind, didn't we? Yeah, that's right. So I um, joined Scale It right at the beginning. I thought mm -hmm. if I'm going to do this, I want to do it properly. Yeah. And I don't have the knowledge of this industry myself to mm -hmm. make a really good go of it. And holy moly, I honestly would not be where I am now without mm -hmm. Scale It and without you know, even the podcast and things like that, the wealth of information that I've learned is invaluable. I, I couldn't put a price on it. And just having those ready-made processes that, you know, even down to now you've got the website, templates and all that sort of thing is just for any aspiring virtual assistants out there that really, truly are 100% committed to making this work, then they need to belong to scale it because honestly, that that's how you're going to grow. That's how you're going to succeed mm -hmm. because everything is there for you. You got no excuse. <laughs> we made all the mistakes, Mandy, so that you don't have to, right? Exactly. Exactly. Like, why, why recreate things? Why, yeah, try and research it all for yourself and make mistakes mm -hmm. when it's all there for you. And um, yeah. obviously, you still got to go out and find your own clients, but yeah, you know, if you can get your everything set up properly and know that you're on the right track like even now three years down the track I'm still a member and I still go into the vault regularly mm. and update and look what's there yeah. and what other things I can do and okay I need to think about this part of my business now what can I what resources are there for me so Aww. all the time yeah that's awesome thank you Mandy but as you said about your clients like you can support them to the cows come home but you can't do the work for them and it's exactly, exactly the same with yeah. joe and i and and all of you awesome members of, of the mastermind it's the same thing like mandy you, you're the one that built this we've given you the advice we've given you some tools but it's you who put in the hard yards you've you know you've ridden the highs as much as the lows and 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 look at you three years on it's it's incredible besides the the obvious huge benefit that we've already talked about of once you go all in on a niche or specialty you absolutely become that go-to virtual assistant you're on everyone's mind like everyone knows to send clients with ADHD to Mandy right to transcend mm -hmm. what other benefits Mandy have you seen since going all in on your niche I think it's just been clear for me as well 
when you're doing your marketing or your social media and all that sort of thing, you're mm. you're targeting it to the people that you're trying to talk to. So that's a really clear benefit. And I suppose in some way we still some people have niched down to say just bookkeeping or just social media and all that sort of thing. So we're still a, a generalist over the types mm-hmm. of tasks that we do. Mm-hmm. It's just the people that we do it for. But it just is, it makes it really clear in your mind. But sometimes you get this little, like some of the matchmaking opportunities that come out and you go, oh, that sounds like an amazing client. Stay in your lane, Mandy, stay in your lane. Mm-hmm. And a couple of my legacy Clients don't have ADHD, so and I'm still working with them, but they're still in mm-hmm. their health and well-being space, the mm-hmm. space where they're, you know, helping people with their mental health, etc. So, but I, I've got to really think. Okay, that's not that's not who I'm targeting, so I'm not going to put my name forward, and that is tough because you feel, sometimes you feel, you feel get a little bit of FOMO. It's like, oh, I'd really like to put my name forward for that one, but you go, no, mm-hmm. I've got to, I've got to. A target and that's who I'm going for and being really really clear and sticking mm-hmm. to it but yeah I think definitely the in your messaging having a particular person or type of person that you're messaging to definitely makes things easier rather than just like a scattergun of trying to reach everybody it's a lot tougher it makes it much easier doesn't it yes yeah. yeah. And what about what about the number of leads that you like regularly get in? Is this like going in all on that niche? Has that meant that your leads have in, increased or decreased? Definitely increased. Again, I think it's probably because the organized. It's funny because we've kind of, even though we've niched to ADHD, we kind of again niched in our niche. And a lot of the people that we tend to be working with are people like counsellors and coaches, psychiatrists, psychologists, people that are in that wellbeing industry. So it's kind of word of mouth. And I think that's where mm-hmm. the word of mouth is coming from is, you know, it's a very small industry in New Zealand, well, smallish industry in New Zealand, but everyone kind of knows each other. So mm-hmm. that's been really, really helpful. So one of the clients that we have is quite a, a, quite a big ADHD-centric organisation, coaches, counsellors, GPs, all that sort of thing, and really, really knowledgeable around ADHD. So they've been a wealth of knowledge as well, not, you know, for learning more and understanding more about the type of people that we're working with. But, yeah, they, I think it's from there, the networks, your fingers, you know, your spider web spreads within those networks, and that's where the word of mouth is coming in. So. Although we're not getting loads of uns, what's well, all unsolicited, I guess, but you know, just random people off social media or whatever it is, it's more of the lead coming in from word of mouth. So definitely increase. And they go through little pockets as well. I'm not sure what it is. You'll get a little flurry of leads and then it'll be quiet for a little while <laughs> and then you get another little flurry and you're doing proposals left, right, and center and then it's quiet mm. again. And I guess mm. the other thing, with people with ADHD is sometimes, you know, they can procrastinate and they can, something is like a hyper focus, focus for them at the moment. I need support. I need help. I need a virtual assistant. I'm going to research it and I'm going to find someone and all this Mandy and I'm going to have a meeting and proposal and blah, blah, blah. And then it gets parked. So mm. you're right. You're saying mm. about the ghosting of the leads and that that's very, it's quite usual for us. And, we, and But again, yeah. we understand that. We go, okay, well, maybe we need to follow up more with these clients rather than mm. what we would for someone else because yeah. it's not that they're ghosting you or ignoring you. It's just that at this, this point in time, it's not a priority at the moment. So, again, just understanding the way the brain is working. Yeah, nice. Right. Is there anything, Mandy, that we have not covered in this episode yet that you would like aspiring or established virtual assistants who are listening to know about your story or some advice that you have for them? I think just if we're talking about the niche side of things, don't be scared. Like, give it a go. At the end of the day, if it's not working, although give it a really good go, if it's not working, (laughs) you don't have to get it forever. But I really think it's worthwhile and it just gives you a really clear direction for your business, for you and the type of people or the type of work that you want to do. And it, I really believe that it, it will help grow your business because you're, you're, as you said, you've become known 
as the person mm-hmm. to go to. You know, there's virtual assistants in in the industry now that are they're like known for being trades virtual assistants and things like that. So you know that when you get people coming to you, you might have a discovery call with someone that's not quite your niche or not quite your type of client. You go, okay, I know someone that I can refer you to, and those internal referrals are also really, really helpful and really, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and two no virtual assistants. Yeah, Mandy, mm-hmm. would you do anything differently if you look back? Um, if you if you if you had a redo, would you do anything differently? I don't know if I would. I think the things that I've done that I might not do again was important for my learning and my growth. So even though at the time, or well, after it's looking back, it might be well that was probably not the right thing to do. I think it was important for me to have gone through this journey and for like niching down to just health and wellbeing and then go, no, I want to niche even more. That mm. was a journey and I and I don't regret doing it like that. So no, I don't have any regrets. No. I'm really it's happy. It's a great way of looking at it. Yeah. It's a great perspective. It is a great way of looking at it. Yeah. Biggest struggle. I'd like to know your biggest biggest struggle and biggest highlight in the last three years. Probably my biggest highlight would be Apart from the amazing people that I've met and the amazing clients that we work with, like honestly, so lucky, would be the increase in our revenue. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, you know, if we've got a really good business going on, and, and you know, make, for me, if, like I said, it feels like I've grown slowly, but the revenue side of things has been amazing. I'm really proud, and I'm proud of the service that we're delivering. The struggle would probably be still, you know, doing client work and then also trying to grow my business. And you're right, mm. you have, you're trying to bring in team members and trying to do discovery calls for leads and that, but you're still doing client work. But yeah, and, and I mm. suppose it's that same struggle when you choose to go from a full-time role or a part-time role to a virtual assistant, mm. kind of that again, that making that leap from still doing client work to then being solely a CEO or you know, yeah yeah something we're going to keep working on with you Mandy yeah, yeah. <laughs> my problem is I actually enjoy the client work so that's, yeah. that's kind of where I struggle as well I do enjoy mm-hmm. that sort of thing so mm-hmm. yeah it's probably a little something for me as well to work on yeah <laughs> where, where do you see where do you see Transcend going or being in I don't know five years I would really like to be out there and known as a virtual uh, ADHD virtual assistant agency that people with ADHD are aware of and are tapping into mm-hmm. and that I've got a really good solid team who have a really good understanding and that we're out there helping people and it's it is becoming a more and more recognized mm-hmm. thing. The more and more people are being diagnosed and there's more and more exposure in that. There's things going on in the government you know, to help people be diagnosed and all that sort of thing. So Mm. it's growing and the amount of people being diagnosed as adults is growing. So I just, yeah, I want to be part of the industry that are out there Mm. to support. And, yeah, hopefully, hopefully still having a successful business. Yeah, oh, no hoping. You you are made for this, Mandy. You have got a really great niche. You can absolutely see your business will double in the next five years for sure. Yeah. Oh, and we're proud of you. Proud of you as as you know, coaches as being part of your journey for the past three years. But just love the way that you've obviously just found your place in life. Like mm-hmm. you just seem so content in what you're doing and really strong in terms of the how you see it heading as well. And the fact that you're changing lives, Mandy. Like you've you're literally changing lives with with the services that you provide. It's it's incredible. Yeah. Well, as I said, without a degree in, in psychology or anything like that, this is my way of helping. And, yeah. uh, and hopefully we are and making people's lives a little bit easier. So no, I think that, I that you are. goes for everybody that's in the virtual system. That, you know, we, we are all helping our clients to some degree. And I think if you're, you know, everyone, hopefully, in the, our industry is thinking the same way. and proud you know being really mm-hmm. proud of what we're doing to support people out there because that's what we're there for yeah 
It's what keeps me up in the morning anyway. Oh. All right. Shall we wrap it up there? So if anyone would like to get in touch with Mandy, maybe you have a ADHD lead or someone that you know that could really do with Mandy's services, then where can people find or contact you, Mandy? Probably the easiest would be via our website. We've got a contact mm -hmm. us page, so it's transcendadmin.co.nz. Awesome. We'll put that in the show notes for you as well. Mandy, thank you again. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your incredibly inspiring story with us. Thank you for having me and thank you for all your support over the last three years. <laughs> I honestly, truly hang to my heart, would not be here doing what I am without you guys. Oh, oh. thanks, Mandy. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this episode of the Sam and Joe VA Show. If you'd like to find out more, head to the VA Foundry website to check out the Mastermind and the amazing resources, courses, and coaching. You can find us at thevafoundry.com.